Hello, I've got a fun Christmas story for you today. This one's called Mr. Willoughby's Christmas Tree by Robert Berry. And what I like about this book, as you'll see, is that everybody gets to use the Christmas tree, every part of it, um, that there's always something more. So it's kind of like giving. You always have something more to give to people, even when you think that you don't. All right, Mr. Willoughby's Christmas Tree. Mr. Willoughby's Christmas tree came by special delivery, full and fresh and glistening green, the biggest tree he had ever seen. Look at that, looks like a pretty well-to-do family. They've got a big house, and that's a huge tree that they ordered. He dashed downstairs to open the door. This was the moment he waited for. A magnificent tree, splendid, he cried. Please, sir, won't you carry it inside? I think it might look best this year, right in the parlor corner here. There's some answering the door, bringing the tree in, and that's where they're going to set it up. But once the tree stood in its place, Mr. Willoughby made a terrible face. The tree touched the ceiling, then bent like a bow. Oh, good heavens, he gasped. Something must go. Baxter the butler was called on in haste to chop off the top, though it seemed quite a waste. That's great, Mr. Willoughby cried with glee. Now we can start to trim my tree. When the trimming was well underway, the top was placed on a silver tray. Baxter said, I know just who'd be delighted with this Christmas tree. So it was presented to Miss Adelaide, Mr. Willoughby's upstairs maid. Here he is, coming down the very tip top. And there he is uh, bringing up the Christmas top as a Christmas tree for Adelaide. Won't this be a tree be a pretty sight when I have trimmed it later tonight? But the top, oh dear, I'm so afraid, will have to be cut, sighed Miss Adelaide. And so with scissors sharp and long, she snipped off the top while she hummed a song. The top was set out the very next day in the back of the house to be thrown away. So there she is setting up her Christmas tree on a table, but it doesn't quite fit there. So she snipped off the top and there it is in the trash. That little tree top caught the eye of Tim, the gardener passing by. He certainly was not about to see that little tree thrown out. He hurried it right home straight away to see what Mrs. Tim would say. Fa la 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 la, surprise, surprise. His wife could not believe her eyes. But our house, she said, is so snug and small. I don't do not believe we need it all. And before Tim had a chance to shout, she cut off the top and threw it out. So there's the gardener finding the little top of the tree, which he thinks would make a good Christmas tree for them. He brings it home to his wife. There they are, and she's like, nope, doesn't quite look right. So she topped off the top of it. Barnaby Bear was padding by. It almost hit him in the eye. Now who would throw a tree away so very close to Christmas Day? I'll take it home. That's what I'll do. Look, Mama Bear, I have a present for you. There's Barnaby Bear finding the top of the Christmas tree and deciding, hey, that's a good Christmas tree for me. And there he is bringing it home to his den. Isn't it a pretty tree, yawned Mama Bear quite drowsily. Before we go to sleep this year, let's have a Christmas party, dear. But Little Bear, standing off far, cried out, That tree won't hold a star, Barnaby said. Let's cut a hunk off the bottom here at the trunk. But Mama Bear just shook her head and sliced the treetop off instead. So there they are in their den. See how it's not just a little bit too tall? And so Papa was going to take it off from the bottom, but Mrs. Bear said, let's just cut it off from the top, make another little Christmas tree. Jolly by golly, Barnaby said with a kick, Mama, that surely is just the right trick. Let's trim it with bells and honey rings, some berries and tinsel and popcorn on strings. Mama said, trim it just as you like. I've got to tie me up, tidy up for the night. This top we won't need anymore. I'll put it just outside the door.
Later on that frosty night, Frisky Fox came into sight. He spied the treetop, rubbed his chin, opened his sack, and stuffed the top in. He scampered home and jumped his gate. This Christmas present couldn't wait. It's even better than mincemeat pie, said Mrs. Fox with a happy sigh. Then the foxes saw that their Christmas prize was just a wee bit oversize. There, my dears, now don't you worry. I'll fix this top now in a hurry. He is bringing his surprise, and there it is up on their dresser. Look at it, it's just a little bit too tall. So snip, off goes the top again. Benjamin Rabbit found it then, just outside the fox's den. It seems, he thought most certainly, Santa left that for my family. Look, he cried, see the tree I found. With that, he called his family round. Then there was a merry-making, rollicking, frolicking, carrot-shaking celebration around the tree. All were happy as rabbits can be. Benjamin Rabbit, with his own hand, sliced a carrot and made a stand. Now let's see how this will look in our little chimney nook. But right away the children cried, look, it's leaning off to one side. It's too tall, that's all, said Mrs. Rabbit. And as though it were a summer carrot, she gave it a chop and threw away the top. There it is on their fireplace, a little bit too small. And there she is, just top off, chop off the top and throw it outside. Then Mistletoe Mouse just happened to see that tiny tip of a Christmas tree. He pulled it through the snow and ice, up some stairs, fell down twice. At last he reached his cozy house. It's just the right size, said Mrs. Mouse. Then at the top, if you please, they put a star made out of cheese. There's the mouse, he's finding it. He's bringing it up to their home. Dragging it into his home. Just the perfect size. And there it is with its star of cheese. Oh, wasn't it grand to have a tree exactly like Mr. Willoughby? So remember at the beginning of the book, Mr. Willoughby got that great big tree and tipped off the top. They ended up with the very last piece back in the house. And that's the story of Mr. Willoughby's Christmas tree. Hope you enjoyed it.